Welcome to the Financial Goddess YouTube channel. In today's YouTube video, I'm going to run you through five steps that are essential in starting your own business. When I had a look at the Facebook uh, community and a lot of the times that clients come and visit me in the office, more often than not, they come post fact uh, once they've made some bad business setup decisions. So I thought um, for anyone out there that is currently thinking of st setting up a business, I will create this YouTube video to assist you to do things properly the first time around. So my first word of advice for anyone that is currently thinking of starting their own business is to do your market research and analysis. So firstly, look at what is it that you're trying to create and then try to do your research to see if there actually is any demand for the type of product or the type of service that you're offering. If the market is already oversaturated with people offering the same or similar type of product or service, then I would suggest that you rethink your ideas. I would also recommend as part of your research, you really look into who you would consider to be your highest competitors and see how they do things. Furthermore, I would recommend that you do something that is um, called a SWOT analysis. So that's looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I would recommend you to do a two tier one. So the first tier would be on your personal level. So looking at your personal strengths and weaknesses as in skills, funding, and what you bring to the table. And the second one is looking at the SWOT analysis from your proposed uh, business plan idea. The second thing, once you've done your thorough market research and analysis, is to identify your UVP, otherwise known as unique value proposition. There is a lot of so-called um, gurus and motivational speakers out there that call it different things, but effectively, what you're looking for is identifying your point of difference. So if you're thinking of setting up a cafe, for example, and there's already 10 cafes in your suburb, what would make customers choose your cafe over the one next door? What's your unique point of difference? Is it a, a vibe? Is it a different customer service um, set? Are you offering organic menu? Is it just locally grown produce? What is different about your business, about your product or service? Sometimes you might know answer to that straight away. Otherwise, if you're not sure, just do some digging as it will help you with the follow-up steps, especially once you move on to launching the product and marketing your ideas. The third step in starting up your business is to actually look at the registrations and licensing requirements, not only for your business type, but for the um, locations that you're planning to operate a business from. So if you're planning to operate, um, let's say a pub, for example, from Queensland in Australia, those licensing and registrations and permit requirements will be slightly different to that from New South Wales. It's very different to if you're trying to operate a pub from California, New York or Paris. So never assume that your licensing requirements will be the same. Always make sure that you understand what is required from you as a business owner in terms of registrations and licensing and factor those costs in as part of your startup costs. The fourth tip that I'm going to bring to you today, it's all about the business structure. So in Australia, for example, you have a choice of being set up as a sole trader, partnership, a trust or a company. Now, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of clients walking through the door being incorrectly set up as a sole trader. They, without seeking any accounting advice, they go in and set themselves up in 15 minutes incorrectly, which can be quite costly a decision for their business in terms of both tax liabilities and the lack of asset protections. So the first thing that I would say to you if you're thinking of setting up the business and you've done your market research, you know what's your unique selling point, you understand the um, licensing and registration requirements for the particular industry as well as the location in which you're planning to operate, then go and see an accountant 
discuss your circumstances and your goals and let them help to advise you as to what the business structure is for you. Each business structure offers different benefits and there is different costs involved as well as different levels of compliance requirements. So it's important that you do your due diligence and understand each one of those options to determine the best one for you. Don't just go with the cheapest and what you think is easiest as sole trader as more often than not that ends up being a costly mistake. My fifth one for you and the last tip for today is in terms of preparing a business plan. Listen, I know it can be a painful process and quite a lengthy and thick document, but it is critical. A, a good business plan will incorporate everything, your budgets, your um, team of consultants that you'll be working with, your marketing plan, your business structure, your goals for the next three to five years. And it's a great document to have, especially if as a business you'll be looking to get some external funding, whether it is through the banks or private investors. Failing to plan is the same as planning to fail. That's um, an old proverb and certainly it's true in this case. I know business plans can be quite costly to prepare. So if you're looking at minimizing your costs to start with, you can just download, um, you can Google little templates and download them through Word document as a starting point. I wouldn't recommend using that as your final document, but we'll certainly cut down on the expenses once you start working with an accountant who can help you then um, polish it up and redefine it. As always, it will be cheaper for you if you know what you're doing and you have the patience to do your own research, do your own homework, to prepare some basic skeletal business plan and have something that you can take to an accountant with you that you can discuss and they can just um, fix it up for you, tinker it around to make sure it ticks off all the boxes. Of course, if the accountant is starting it from scratch, they have to ask you all these questions, go through a discovery process and that cost to you is significantly higher. And the bonus tip for you today is all about creating a budget. So understanding the amount of money that is required for you to start a business and to fund it in initial stages. Most of the businesses go out of business within the first three years due to insufficient cash flow. So you want to make sure that before you quit your nine to five job and before you go all heads in into the business, you have a solid understanding. So there'll be costs um, to you in relation to setting up the business, the licenses, registrations, you might wanna have domain name, uh, costing, um, hosting costs rather, cost of printing business cards and your flyers and your marketing or advertising you might be doing out there professional membership fees, subscriptions to any software you might need to run a business, internet costs, etc., etc., etc. The list just gets longer. All those costs, however, as part of the setup costs are tax deductible for you. Now, once the business is set up and operating, usually for the first two to three years, businesses run at a loss. They don't turn profits until you, year three, sometimes to year five, depending on what the product or service is. So you have to look at your sources of funding and see how you can source, how you can service um, the expenses related to your business. A lot of clients I talk to within the business community don't quite understand the challenges of going into it and are not realistic enough about what it's actually going to cost them to run a business. As such, they are not fully financially ready to take on that responsibility and sometimes end up giving up and going to a paid employment as they haven't been realistic upfront and haven't put enough money aside to service their new um, business growth and development. If you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful and informative, just subscribe to the Financial Goddess channel for more and don't forget to click like.